I believe that this was once a site of old mining ruins. It was later reconstructed by the Army Corps of Engineers and today offers a lake, hiking trails, and more. It's known as Aylesworth Park. In this video, I'm going to show you what it has to offer. So I invite you to come along with me as we explore this hidden gem. Before we walk around and check everything out, let's do a brief tour of this park from the air. So we're now down here at what is known as Aylesworth Park Office. It's also where you're going to find the covered pavilion. Now it is available for public use, but with reservation only. And it can hold up to 150 people. And the great thing about it is that there's plenty of picnic tables. There are clean restrooms. There's electricity. And if we look through the far side here, there's actually charcoal grills. So you could easily have a little party here or just a cookout. But this is not the only place that you can have cookouts either, or picnics, or do you even you know, have a group of people. I'm gonna show you some more areas as well, but this is the main feature when you come into the park here, this beautiful covered pavilion. Now I did mention that I believe that this property was the site of old mining ruins, specifically strip mining ruins. And in a little bit, I'm gonna share with you how I came to that conclusion. Now, I will tell you in advance, if I am incorrect on anything, I do apologize. I'm not a historian. I'm just the avid researcher who likes to look into things a little bit. But the history of this place is rather unique. The other thing I can confirm, though, is that in later years, after the property was no longer being used, the Army Corps of Engineers did come here and pretty much alter this location. And I'm going to touch more on that in just a moment. They actually do have a placard here sharing some information about that but it's amazing how this this land has transformed i mean if you think about it originally it was natural land you know it was pretty much trees and just untouched landscape and then it became altered by man when they did some mining at least it appears to be mining from what i've seen and then later on the army corps of engineers transform it into what we see today and they actually put a lot of work into this place and made it a really pristine beautiful hidden gem of a park so here's a placard with some information it has Aylesworth Creek Lake which is the official name of the lake there and it says why build a dam it says imagine August 1955 as Hurricane Diane moves through northeastern Pennsylvania from 6 to 16 inches of rainfalls isolating the city of Scranton more than 90 lives are lost in the region Multiple historic floods like this spurred Congress to authorize construction of Aylesworth Creek Lake, a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers project. Its primary purpose? Reduce the risk of floods in communities such as Oliphant, Music, and Scranton. Then it states, how does this dam work? Unlike many dams, Aylesworth Creek Lake does not have gates to adjust the flow of water. Instead, think of the pipe through the dam as more like a funnel. Water flows freely through the pipe under normal conditions. During floods, if more water flows in the pipe than it can accommodate, pressure forces the water back into the lake. And it says, what does it mean to you? It basically means flood, 
flood risk management, preventative uh, precautionary measures, so to speak. And over here, it says secondary overflow at Aylesworth Creek Lake. I'm going to show you that a little bit later on. So it is pretty amazing that they did construct this from what I believe to be mining ruins and today made it into not only a park, but something that could prevent a natural disaster in the future. Now, I do know that this may have been used to spare towns and lives back in 1972 when we had what was known as Hurricane Agnes. That was a devastating hurricane that flooded many towns and communities. Um, I could really go on and on about that, but you could do your own research. Just search Hurricane Agnes, A-G-N-E-S, and you'll be able to see what took place here back in 1972. Through the trees there is the big levee, if you want to call it a dam. Now, I will be honest with you, when I first saw this place and I actually stumbled upon it, me and RJ found it by accident coming to look for a place to run our little live steam engines the one day and I followed the signs for the park and it brought us here. I lived in this area my whole life, never knew this place existed. But the unique thing is when I first saw it, and as you'll see as I show you about too, this appears to be like an old reservoir. That was my initial thoughts. I thought, wow, this is an old reservoir and they repurposed it into a park. But that's not the case. This is not a reservoir. This is a lake, but it's not used for, you know, drinking water of sorts. It's just to hold back enormous amounts of water going down into the valley. So although it does have the, the look of a reservoir, it's more or less a dam but when it's in good condition, it's more of a park. So it's kind of multi-use, but I was confused at first. I'm like, wait, this has to be an old reservoir. But with that being said though, I'm gonna show you a little while an area where I believe a reservoir was constructed and uh, there's some evidence tying to that. So I'll show you that in just a little bit. But right now we're down here at the lake and this is open to swimming and fishing. Fishing with the license, of course. I'm not sure how the deep, how the deep, how deep the lake is, but there is a little sandy beach here. There's probably some kids in there. And you could uh, come out here with, with a floaty. You could swim, snorkel, whatever you want. And it's really peaceful and serene. You're, you're surrounded by trees. There are some lifeguard chairs and a rowboat there. I don't believe it is manned or watched, but they do want you to basically, you know, use common sense be respectful of others and you know don't go beyond your limits but they do have some picnic tables under the trees over here and over there as well now when i say sandy beach i mean that loosely um, it's more or less dirt but you know it's enough to have it soft and to play in and i can actually see there's some fish in here there's a fish underwater there obviously underwater and the water from what I can see is pretty clear. It's kind of shallow right here. It gets deeper out there. Uh, I'm not going to be going in the water today, but the water looks really clean. Now, another thing I could tell you is that this is not a stagnant body of water. And I could confirm that 100%, and I did through my research, which I'm going to show you uh, when we go to another area. But there is a steady flow of water coming into this body of water. And as we've learned, there's a funnel with the water exiting. So this water is only in here temporarily. I mean, it's not a river, obviously, but it's not stagnant, not stale. It's not, you know, dirty water. It is relatively clean water. And the other unique thing is that if you guys have watched my recent video where I went to what I call as a spider den, that culvert that I went through under the rail line and came out to that body of water, that is known as Aylesworth Creek. This is the same water that flows down to where that location is. So there's a creek flowing into this, and I'm gonna explain where that creek's coming from, but a creek flowing into this, this flows down into the valley and comes out through the spider den culvert and merges with the Lackawanna River. So this is showing where the source of that water is from and why it was so clean and clear and why it was so healthy with the fish, po fish population when I was there doing my snorkeling video. We're now up here in the upper area of the park there's another small parking lot here, some more picnic tables, and this is where you're going to find the multi-purpose field, complete with bleachers. It is set up right now for like a soccer field, and it's 
really well manicured. Grass is nice and low and even. And right here is the little playground area. And it's pretty nice. It's clean. They do have some mulch here on the ground. Parts of it does have that soft foam material, which is right here. And when you step on it, it is soft and squishy. And right behind the swings, they even have your own little cabin playhouse. And look, it, it has the open door policy. It's actually quite nice. Let's go check that out. So you can walk right in the side of it. Inside's actually pretty nice. Fortunately, it is graffitied up, but if you look past that, it's nicely constructed. And you can see it's a uh, more than tall enough for me. It's probably about seven feet high in the highest. Obviously, if you come over here, you're gonna be a little closer, but yeah, it's actually not that bad. They do have some actual windows here. And your front porch, which has the welcome mat. And there we do come out with the front door. Even has its own little porch. So now I want to take you to an area that is behind the multi-purpose field because that is the area that we saw when we first came here. And upon doing some, I guess you could say investigating both in person and online, I was able to determine what that is. So I'm going to get to a different point of it and bring you over there and explain what that actually is or used to be. Now, if you make your way into the woods, you will find some more picnic areas complete with tables, garbage cans, charcoal grills, and plenty of shade. The next point of interest is up here near the entrance. And if you come over here, past this gated area, you'll come upon a fence line here. And that is there to stop you from falling into a big void. And as I keep you rolling, as I bring you closer, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So right here is something rather unique. Now, you you can actually see why the fence line is here. This is a big rock cut area. And this is where things get rather interesting and where I'm going to be sharing my findings as to why I think this was an old strip mined area and also what used to be right here. I'm using the fence right now as my camera holder. So there's a few things I do want to share with you. So first off, right behind you, where I'm going to show you as I talk about it, was an actual dam spillway and what you see now is the void of it because it was dismantled deconstructed a number of years ago i was looking on maps um, specifically google earth where you can actually scroll back through the timeline going back all the way to 1992 this was not here so this was dismantled deconstructed prior to that so i'm guessing sometime between maybe the 50s and the 80s that's just speculation of course but what this is, this whole area here, is actually the secondary overflow of the main lake. That placard that we read showed a picture and a little description saying secondary overflow. If the lake was ever to flood and the water reached this way, it would be able to flow down this rock cut channel down into the valley. Now, I don't think it's ever happened as far as I know. If it did, it would have been 1972 with Hurricane Agnes. But this whole rock cut area is drilled and blasted out. There's very prevalent drill markings, drill lines, even some leftover drill holes, and it was all drilled and blasted. And when I first discovered this, I thought for certain this was an old reservoir. Now, not to say it couldn't have been, I think if it was a reservoir, it was only short-lived. Now, they definitely built a concrete dam spillway, but as I just mentioned, it's already gone. It's been gone for a few decades now. So I think they, maybe they used this as a temporary reservoir or a way to harness the water 
back during the mining operations or maybe even during the construction here with the Army Corps of Engineers. That I don't know. I'm just throwing out what I could speculate as to what it could have been used for or when or why. Now getting to why I think this was used as a strip mining land. So I did do some research with the old maps I find dating back from the 1930s going forward. Now I can't find anything earlier to 1930s. So before that, I can't say what took place here, but between the 1930s and the 60s onwards, this area was altered. You could see mounds of material. You could see voids and pits. I'm pretty confident that this was a strip mining area, not just specifically where the park is, but the entire surrounding area. It was a big operation, large piece of property and land that was mined out. And my thoughts are is that once they mined, extracted the coal, they left a lot of these voids here. And eventually, you know, they started filling up with water. And I think that's what started happening with the lake area. You know, when they saw that water was going to start collecting there, that's when the Army Corps of Engineers stepped in and made that levee dam wall and the precautionary measures they took to prevent a catastrophe down into the valley. The other evidence I have too is that behind this park, there's some old access roads and they're still on Google Maps today. And they're actually listed as Old Mining Road, Old Mining Road 1, 2, and 3, they're numbered. So that right there is another telltale sign that this property was accessed with other properties that were being mined and they just dubbed it the Old Mining Road 1, 2, and 3. So that is why I came to the conclusion that this property may have been an old strip mining area back in the day. When the mining activity ceased, you know, Army Corps of Engineers stepped in and made it what it is today, which is pretty incredible. You know, they not only made something safe for the, the valley and the communities, but they made it something for the public to be able to enjoy. I did mention earlier too, that that lake has a constant source of water coming into it. It's not stagnant water. Well, as I was looking at those maps, Further upstream, if we follow Aylesworth Creek, there's actually another reservoir further up in the mountains. That one's a small reservoir, but it's been there since at least the 30s. It's showing on the map since the 30s, and it's still there today. I don't know if it's active, don't know if it's washed or maintained. I may or may not try to get there in the future, but that is a reservoir that the water coming from there comes down known as Aylesworth Creek, flows into Aylesworth Creek Lake, and then flows down again as Aylesworth Creek down the valley and merges with the Lackawanna River. So we at least know that this water here is coming from a reservoir. Typically reservoirs are pretty clean. And as we saw, the water is pretty clear here. So reservoir, creek, lake, creek, Lackawanna River. So that's the kind of sum up what is going on here, what did go on here and what's happening today. And it makes for, I think to me, a pretty incredible story because people come here and just see this as a park, like a recreational park. I see it as a transformation of so many things and that you can enjoy it as a park today. That's just a bonus. That's just the, you know, the, the extra icing on the cake. One thing too, you may have heard as I was talking and I'm going to show you with my finger here and with the drone, there's actually a pipe coming out of the rock wall and there's water flowing out of that pretty much 24 seven. Anytime I come here, there's water flowing out of there. I'm pretty sure it's like a natural underground spring of sorts and they just harnessed it with a pipe to have it coming spill out and it's just pulling up here. But this is what is left of the dam spillway. But there is something down here too. Also helping confirm what I just mentioned, there is a marker here. It says Corps of Engineers, US Army survey marker. And year looks like 2000 i'll take a picture and show you because i can't see it from here but you guys can see what it is but that's a survey marker right here on the concrete edge of the former dam wall and spillway but just imagine when this was intact if there was water here water would, would have been in the deepest those walls there and just came over the spillway and flowed down here through the rest of the rock cut under what is now U.S. Route 6, or locally known as the Casey Highway. Now, while I was walking around the park, I did stop and talk to a couple of locals who looked like they were pretty familiar with the place. And on the website, it's mentioned that there's hiking trails here, walking hiking trails, whatever you want to call them. 
and there's no signs though showing where they are now as i was driving walking around i did see some pathways and trails going off in different directions so i asked the locals and i'm like is there like hiking trails here They're like yes They're like do you want you know something short or do you want like a longer one to see the entire property i'm like the longer one they're like well all you got to do is kind of start here at the gate which is right here and they said walk on top of the levee here and just follow the trail it'll take you through the woods around the lake and you eventually cross over the creek that's flowing into the lake showing you know where the source coming into it and back out to the upper area near the playground so that's what we're going to do i'm going to start making my way across the levee here i'm not going to show you each and every footstep obviously but i will show you highlights along the way and this will give us a good sense as to what there is to see on this trail at the park and to show you where it comes out if you want to come here for, come here for yourself and walk this exact trail now you don't have to start here you can start where we do exit this will at least show you from beginning to end so if you're ready lace up your shoes and come along with me as we take a walk slash hike around Aylesworth Creek Lake Park quite a breezy day today but especially up on top of here there's slopes on both sides for the levee and the wind is just shooting up on both sides so I'm getting blasted with air so hopefully the microphone is doing its job but as we come out here we're gonna be greeted with some incredible views and it's a great way to get an overlay of this park here so off to my right is the lake and down there is the intake, the, the pipe or funnel that they mentioned where the water from this lake is flowing into and it actually flows through here underneath us. There's a pipe and it discharges down there. So it comes out, there's a little open area there and then a culvert that goes underneath US Route 6. And then from there, it makes its way as Aylesworth Creek down to the rail trail area, eventually flows into the Lackawanna River. You can actually see there's a platform down there and a valve, I guess if they want to open or shut or change the amount of water going through that pipe. Now, I don't believe you're allowed down there. There is a gate up there, which does have posted, no trespassing down here. So they do want to stay away from that for obvious reasons, but if you're in the lake though i mean you could at least get somewhat near it if you wanted to i'm sure but i wouldn't get too close but look at the view from here though aside from the power lines we got the valley down below which is being protected from this actual levee that we're standing on if this wasn't here all that water would flow down there and just flood out the little small towns and make its way you know to wherever the water is going to flow but it's a nice view though it's loud because of the highway but that is how things are around here but this is a more more beautiful view here i'll just give you a moment of silence here you can take in the view and whatever sounds you do here made my way across the levee came behind this little shack here which says it's a uh, survey station and as I come down the little hill here I saw this gauge here now this is rather interesting if this is indeed for water and water made it up this high the high number there is 64.50 64 feet I believe I mean that height is nearly at the top of the levee there. I don't know if water ever made it that high or if it ever would today, but I just wanted to show you that it is standing here as a type of gauge or meter. I'm guessing for water, if it ever was or did reach that height. 
Okay, I'm learning as I go here, so bear with me. So I just showed you that gauge there. Well, there's actually a number of them staggered down the hillside here. So this is at different stages. This one only goes to 5750 right there. So I'm guessing these are here in case water was to reach as high, they could actually see how high it is. I'm guessing from down there, if I was to guess or assume, you know, 57 feet, I'm guessing is above the level down there, 57 feet up, if I understand that correctly. But I am curious if water ever did make it up here. Like I said, if it did, it could have been from Hurricane Irene, as mentioned in that placard, or Hurricane Agnes. But I can't confirm that. But that is a long way for the water to go, though. It would be a really deep, big lake. And the parking lot and the pavilion would be underwater if the water did indeed reach this level. few different trails back here going in different directions I'm basically picking the ones that are going closest to the lake the other ones may just go off in a whole nother direction Here's another example of different paths back here. So this one's going off to the left, up the hill. May merge up with another one, but it's going away from where we are. This is more or less uh, an ATV trail. Whether it's used by park services or off-roaders, I don't know, but this is indeed the walking hiking trail that does go around the lake. Because as we look to our right, if you peer through the leaves, there is Halesworth Creek Lake. And there's a bit more people over there too at the beach area. So this is great to see from the whole different view, different side. And I gotta say this trail is not strenuous. You know, I, when I do say hiking, I use that term loosely. You don't need hiking gear to do this. It is just a recreational trail, but it is listed on their website as a hiking trail, but very easy to maneuver. Just a couple slight hills. The only thing you have to look out for is some loose rocks, um, some tree roots, like right here. Pretty easy to trip over it. May even be worthy of, you know, taking a mountain bike around here. It doesn't say it's not allowed. So depending on what type of bike you have or your skill set, I'm sure you could always attempt to do that as well. But for me, going on foot, is best right now and able to stop and see everything and take everything in and here is one more view probably gonna snap a photo from here that's actually pretty nice with the trees and the leaves and you just got a nice clear shot straight through to the beach area
made a right at that fork in the trail there coming down closer and looks like another nice spot we got a uh, some cleared out land here they don't have a trash can back here and this must be the creek that we have to cross so this is Aylesworth Creek that comes down from that reservoir that I explained flows down and goes right into the lake itself I think that's what she thinks. <laughs> hi. Say hi, Lexi. <laughs> this is safe. He's not going to save you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Lexi. Come on. I can't help you. <laughs> got to go with mom. <laughs> She's going to throw her in. You guys forgot how to get over to me. Come here. This way. <laughs> this way. Come on. Come on. <laughs> she attaches to guys instantly. Come on, Bobby. Come on. I promise I won't throw you in. No. This is certainly a really nice, peaceful spot. Dog wanted to hang out longer than they wanted to. They didn't want to cross over. Now, I was able to safely cross over here without a problem, but if you were to come after some heavy rains, I could imagine this would be a little bit more difficult to cross, but right now it's just quiet, peaceful, and the rocks are above the surface, so pretty easy to get across. But it looks kind of nice up here. It's opened up rather spacious. So before we continue out that way, let's just venture up here a little bit and see what it looks like. Now, if you look at the landscape here, it's really open and really kind of matted down there's not a whole lot of weeds or brush here so I'm not sure if that's because of people just walking here or from high waters in the past or a combination of both but at least allows you to see the ground very easily and there's not really a whole lot of obstacles other than just the roots and the rocks this water is really nice and clear which rightfully so it should be because it's coming from a reservoir. So here's a little pool area. Not deep enough to swim in, but there's a little fire ring too. So people have been back here enjoying the this area. Yeah, this is why I typically like to find when I see streams and creeks. It's just areas where it slows down and pulls up and makes little kind of bodies of waters like this. To me, it's just really... I don't know how to describe it. It's peaceful, it's beautiful, relaxing, and just kind of neat. Just how nature and everything forms on its own and creates what it wants to do based on the landscape here. So I'm sure you could venture much further back. I'm not going to do that today, but in the future I will. Uh, whether or not I bring you guys aboard, we'll determine that in the future but now I want to get back to the trail and show you where it comes out it's actually a, a pretty nice walk I, I enjoyed that plenty of shade and not a whole lot of difficulty so I pretty pretty safe to say that anyone of any skill level could handle this trail now the trails are not marked there's no blazes and as I explained and showed you, there's ones going in different areas. My best advice is if you want to kind of recreate what I did here, just stay as close to the lake as you can with the trails that you see. Otherwise, they may take you to a whole different area away from the park and you may end up facing some difficult terrain or just simply get, getting lost. This is nice and open here now. And I think we're gonna be coming out up here near a road. And here we are, here's the exit or entry, depending on where you're going. And we're right behind the little cabin playhouse. All right, that was pretty neat. So it shows how far we've gone. 
in the amount of area that we covered. But I do want to show you one thing up here that I mentioned earlier. So let me get up here and I'll tell you what it is. So to put things into perspective, there is the parking lot for the recreation field and playground. And there is another placard here, just giving some information. So it says it covers a four acre area. Ellsworth Creek Lake was formed in October 1970 by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for flood control. The lake collects water from a drainage area of 6.2 square miles. Lackawanna County added Aylesworth Park to the county park system in 2005. Lackawanna County Department of Parks and Recreation maintains the park for public enjoyment and leisure. And it says, did you know Aylesworth Park consists of 252 total acres? The lake is stocked twice yearly with trout by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Lake activities include swimming, fishing, and picnicking. In 2007, a new underground limestone treatment system to reduce the acid mine drainage that runs from Aylesworth Creek into the lake was constructed under the Lackawanna Watershed Program. The treatment system is located on the west branch of the creek, approximately 2,700 feet upstream from the dam. So that is something I just realized as I read it to you, that they do have a system to collect and reduce the acid mine drainage that is coming into here. That's why the water is clean and clear. It's not stained orange. And there's looking uh, down there where the culvert is. But the other thing I wanted to show you besides that placard is just up here. Now they do have this gate here and it's just to keep vehicles from coming up here. It's not posted. There's no sign stating you can't come up here, but there is some access roads. This one in particular, from what I saw on Google Maps, it's listed as one of the old mining roads. And that's what I talked about earlier, the old mining roads, old access roads that came to this property from back in the day when this place was being mined, strip mined, and it leads to other mined areas back out that way. The funny thing is that, you know, I've lived in this area my whole life and at 41 years of age is when I just discovered this, this park. Now, it hasn't been around that long as we read the park was established in 2005, but the lake was created in 1970. So between 1970 and 2005, I wonder, you know, if people did come here before it was officially Aylesworth Park. And knowing, you know, the amount of history here, although it's not super historic, not rich in history, but the transformation to me stands out because like I said, from old mining land to the Army Corps of Engineers putting in millions of dollars into this park and now being a gem of a place where people could come here and do whatever they want as far as what they offer here it's kind of a one-of-a-kind place and i'm glad i found it i just wish i found it found it sooner it took me 41 years to find it but over 250 acres here and the lake water you know the water coming into it is being treated so there's no cause for anyone to be alarmed about the tr uh, the trout fish in there you know, if they're getting them out to eat, it's not going to be harmful to them. And there's people that swim here year and year, year after year, I should say. So the waters are nice and clean and clear. But I'm thinking of it just now, as we read that sign about it, them collecting acid mine drainage. Well, that just goes to show this area was mined. So I think we're able to kind of connect some of the dots and put those puzzle pieces in place and kind of show and explain the transformation over time.
Now I want to know if there's anyone local watching has been here before. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you know of this place, any memories you want to share. And also the information I shared with you, if it is incorrect at all, it's just human error. As I mentioned, I'm not a historian. I don't have a vast collection of resources. I only have what I have and I share what I can and hopefully at least points us in the right direction. But if you guys know anything else or want to share anything else based on what I have shared and showed you here, obviously the comment section is for you guys. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Otherwise, if you did enjoy this look and tour of Aylesworth Creek Park, you could do two things. If you are new, feel free to subscribe because I do put out videos weekly and a lot of them are adventures and explorations of different things here in Pennsylvania. Secondly, if you do go ahead and subscribe, ring that notification bell. That way when the new videos do come out, you won't miss them. You'll get alerted. And to see more videos just like this one, just check that description down below. Otherwise, thank you so very much for joining me for today's adventure and look here at Aylesworth Creek Park, or as I like to call it, this little hidden gem. Otherwise, guys, take care, everyone. Stay safe. And like always, I'll see you real soon in the next video.